Are you wanting to start gardening, but you don't know where to begin? This video is going to be all about how to start seeds indoors. I hope it'll give you some motivation and some confidence to begin your gardening journey. My name is Jessica and this is my channel, Copper Desert Homestead, where we talk about all things related to homesteading and healthy living and everything in between. Today we're starting seeds indoors. As you can see, it's a rainy day outside. It's about mid-January, so it's a perfect time to get my earliest seedlings started. If you're wondering, how do I know which seedlings to start and when, I want to give you a really good resource, and that's the farmersalmanac.com. You can just put in your zip code, and it'll give you your growing zone. Ours, for example, is 7B. It'll give you great start dates. It'll give you your last frost dates, when to transplant, when to direct sow. It's very thorough. But today I just want to tell you what supplies you're going to need, a few seedlings that I've chosen to start, and how the process works. So let's start with what you're going to need. You're going to need a growing tray. This is what mine looks like. I can put links to everything in the description box below. So mine, it's very simple. I think it costs a few dollars. You have a solid tray in the bottom that'll catch all your water, which is important when you're starting seeds inside because of course you don't want water on the floor. And then you have the smaller holes, which is where your dirt and your seed will go. You're gonna want something that has water in it because when we're done, we're gonna put water in the bottom it's always good to water your plants from the bottom because that encourages good root growth. Next, you're gonna need a spray bottle because it's always good to just spray from the top as well to make sure that your germinating seeds have what they need, which is soil, water, and light. Speaking of light, you're gonna wanna eventually put these in a nice south-facing window if you have one. If you don't, you can use grow lights. These are the ones I have and I'll put a link for these as well. I've had them the last two years and they've worked very nicely. It's just good to give your seedlings a little bit of extra, especially during the winter when the sun is low and the days are short. You're gonna want something to cover up your seed tray. This is a little worse for the wear, but it gets the job done. You want this in the beginning to encourage humidity and then also to keep them safe when they're very small and delicate. You're going to want a marker and something to mark on. That way you know which seeds are in which row. You're going to want some seed starting potting mix. I just got this one off Amazon. The reason you want seed starting potting mix as opposed to whatever kind of compost or soil you may have is because the seed starting mix is very fine. That way it can completely enclose the seed as opposed to leaving huge air gaps in between when the seeds are so, so tiny. And then last of all, you're going to want your seeds. I'll share with you the five, I think, no, six that I'm choosing to start today. Um, next month, I'll kind of have another round going of other seeds, and I'm really just choosing my seeds. It's a mixture of what my family will eat it's, and which seeds are hardiest, because I myself am still fairly new to gardening. I'm sure if you asked any gardener, even if they've been gardening for 20 years, they'd still say they're learning. Um, but it doesn't hurt to have some seeds that are hardy and pest resistant so that you have some guaranteed wins as well. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing cherry tomatoes, eggplants, Roma tomatoes, kale, ooh, kale, bell pepper, and broccoli. I also picked some of these because they have longer growing seasons. So since they're gonna need more time to fruit and be ready to harvest, we wanna start them earlier. Okay, so to begin, oh, last thing, you're gonna need something to scoop the dirt to pour in. As you can sort of see in the background, and I'll put in a little bit of video, but we don't have a huge garden. We have two raised beds and some grow bags. So we have to be careful what we pick because we don't wanna overcrowd our plants. 
So I'm just doing these six. However, I'm gonna plant more plants than I intend on transplanting so that I can pick the ones that look the strongest to transplant. Now we're gonna add our soil into the tray. Okay, so I've poured out my soil. As you can see, I've had it a little bit overfilled because it will sink down as we water it. So we wanna make sure that we have enough soil. A lot of people might um, dampen their soil before they even put it in, which is also a good tip. However, I did not do that this time. But since it's dry and it's fluffy, it's gonna absorb this water pretty quick. So you wanna make sure you have an even amount of water covering the bottom of the tray, probably about a half inch, to make sure that your soil is nice and moist to begin with. And then I'm gonna use my spray bottle. So while that's filling up from the bottom, we can kinda of pat that down. While that's filling up from the bottom, we can spray from the top as well. So I'm definitely making a little bit of a mess, but I'm in my kitchen. It's all good, I can always just wipe it onto the floor at the end and then give it a sweep. Gardening is a little bit messy, but you can always clean up afterwards and there's nothing like having your own veggies. Okay, I'm gonna give this a minute to let the water soak up from the bottom and then we're gonna plant our seeds. Okay, so our soil is nice and moist. The next thing we're gonna do is get to labeling and a lot of times these will come with the trays if you buy them off of Amazon or any kind of growing website. Pretty cheap and you get a ton of them so it'll last you for a while. So you want to put the plant on one side and the date on the other. I'm going to go ahead and do this for all my plants. So I have my labels done. I'm gonna go ahead and stick them in. We've got kale, eggplant, tomatoes, Roma, broccoli, kale. No, I did kale twice. <laughs> and tomatoes, cherry. Okay, so bell peppers, that's what I forgot. We're getting extra kale and no bell peppers, but hey, we gotta be able to make fajitas, right? Okay, bell pepper. So now we're gonna take a look at our seeds. Let's start with the kale. What you're gonna do is take the other end of your pen. You wanna look on the back of the, what would I call this thing? Seed bag, that's not right. What is this called? Packet. Okay, starting over. So first we're gonna start with our kale. You're gonna to wanna to look on the back of the packet. It's gonna give you your days till maturity. That's why you wanna write your starting date so that you can have that in mind for when, if you're not sure when am I supposed to pick these. You can always use this number back here. Days till maturity, you're planting depth. So that's how deep the hole is that you wanna put your seeds in. And then your plant spacing, which doesn't really matter right now, but it will matter when you transplant. So for kale, we want planting of about half an inch. So you can take the other end of your pen and make little holes that are about half an inch. Just use your best estimating skills here. Growing vegetables is a science, but it's also an art. Okay. So we're going to want, since it's a small seed and it's a leafy vegetable, we're going to put a few in each one and we can always thin it out later. So we'll do about three in each one. And to thin it out, I can do another video on this, but to thin it out, you'll just take small scissors or pruning shears and cut off right at the, where the dirt meets the stem, cut off the ones that you don't want to keep. The roots will just start to decay and become part of the soil. So it all comes full circle. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my seeds. Okay, so I planted all my seeds according to the packet. I went ahead and covered them a little bit with the top soil and just lightly pat them down. You don't wanna compress them too much. We'll give it one more spray. You'll wanna water these probably every other day, but you don't want them to be soaked. So you kinda of have to get a feel for that. You want it to be moist, but not soaked. Just try and keep that in mind. Remember with gardening, you kind of have to look at it in the sense that I'm learning. You're gonna make failures every year. So don't get upset and don't quit if everything doesn't come out picture perfect because it won't. It's a learning process. It'll get better and better every year. You can do it. I also just wanna stay at this point in time. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe. It would be so great. We're really trying to grow our channel here. Um, and as a small channel, we just appreciate all the help that we can get. Thank you so much. So now let me show you the setup I have for these and where I'm going to leave them until it's time to transplant. Okay, so I just want to show you the setup that we have here. I've just co-opted my husband's dresser. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just wanted to show you this to let you know that you can really use any space that you need. You don't need to have a huge garden to garden. Like you can start simple. So here we have our tray. It's covered up to protect the seedlings um, during these first days of germination. We have our grow lights. Basically, I'll leave the grow lights on till I go to bed at night. I'll turn them off and then I'll turn them on when I wake up in the morning. This is to give them a little bit of extra light while we're still in these winter months, just to set our plants up for the most success. That's really all I'm going to share for now. I can do some more videos. Um, if you'd like, comment below. If you want to see a video on the hardening off and the transplanting process, I can definitely do that for you guys. So enjoy the rest of your day. Happy gardening.